it feels like this is powers that are so strong have a stranglehold on the province in a way that like you can't just you can't just protect the place you can't you can't win a single battle that's what it feels like something is holding them in the current course i think that's too strong that's stronger than the will of the people the largest mass arrest in canadian history and you get no change it's not entirely true to say that there has been no change at the height of the blockades the bc government announced a two-year deferment on old growth logging in ferry creek essentially a temporary moratorium on logging in the geographic heart of the protests then, this past February, the BC government deferred logging in another 2.1 million hectares of old growth forests. This deferral did not include Ferry Creek or the Kaikus. But neither side is satisfied. For many of the activists, those steps feel like half measures and enable more of what they call talk and log. And as Teal Jones rep Conrad Brown explains, the February deferrals have had a major impact on the industry. Industry didn't get a chance to speak on the deferrals until after the fact, and uh, the way that the government rolled it out with so much um, unknown caused a big, a big dip into the 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 resources, if you will, of the companies to have faith in what was going to be moving forward. We are vastly approaching 15 mills permanently shut down so far, and 10,000 or so. Uh, people either temporarily or, or the vast majority permanently laid off. So uh, the old growth deferrals have had a, a major impact um, and I'm not sure if that was the, the intention of the government when they created all of the different uh, new regulations. A lot of the new regulations the province has brought in since the protests have focused on empowering First Nations to co-develop forest landscape plans, essentially giving them more say over logging in their traditional territories. Brown says that Teal Jones is in favor of collaboration with First Nations, but he argues that the current approach has added too many new bureaucratic layers. I don't think that they have a clear understanding of the added layer of what they're doing and the lack of capacity within the vast majority of First Nations to, to add this layer of ref into the referral process and how that was going to slow things down and is showing itself. Um, so there's a whole bunch of things that I don't think people gave enough thought to or enough foresight. They were just reacting, in my opinion, to some pressure uh, and they, were, they made the decision.